No. All right, Jack. Before you were interrupted. Pardon the interruption. <laughs> okay, so um, this agreement that is has provisions in it to have a task force formed with representatives from the county and different users like the townships and then Cincinnati folks, Greater Cincinnati Waterworks folks, to talk about and come to, I guess, a conclusion on what should go into figuring out that new multiplier. Um, that task force broke down and really didn't complete their work. It seems, obviously from my bias perspective, that Cincinnati's just kind of put in a rate and they're going to assess a rate of 1.43. So the multiplier is going from 1.25 to 1.43. Um, the municipal entities, cities and villages, apparently signed something to lock in 1.25 15 years ago. So they're at 1.25 and we're going to be at 1.43. So I think uh, from the township perspective, it's everybody's shrugging their shoulders saying, okay, where does 1.43 come from? How is that justified? We're, I think everybody would be okay saying we're, we're okay paying our fair price, but tell us how you got to the fair price. So long story short, the townships, well, the county filed a temporary restraining order because these rates will go into effect September 1st. The expectation or the hope is that the judge will then freeze, I guess, the rates at 1.25 until the contract can be followed, I guess. I guess that's right. the outfall until it potentially. Can be either amended or the task force can reconvene and have a thorough investigation and explanation of the rate hike. But I would say what we heard today was not much of an explanation for the rate hike. Not, yeah, not, not from the testimony today. So they. They will continue tomorrow morning. Um, we won't know anything. I, I guess he'll rule tomorrow, so hopefully he freezes it and we can still make a run at getting these rates where they need to be. So I, the point is we're, we're looking at it and, and trying to follow it and be as supportive as we can for our residents and, and water customers that are going to pay this rate that doesn't seem to be based in, in – what the rate needs to be. So it's hopefully we'll know something here in tomorrow and that it's going to wait until right. until they can work it out more. Well, and we're being led by the Hamilton County Township Association, but um, Anderson Township, Sycamore Township, Green Township, and Delhi Township are the strongest representatives there. So we are, we are working for some sense of explanation or a better equality to the municipalities, and um, we'll let you know. Follow the news. That's all I have on it. That's Thank all you. we can do. Thank you. Trustee Davis. Thank you. Uh, I just have one quick thing. Some were wondering what all the film crew was doing up at Anderson Ferry and Dow High. I wish I could say it was some big, really cool movie, <laughs> Hollywood. Um, they were filming a lottery commercial, so that's what was happening there. So there was some buzz in the community what was happening, because I know there's different movies that are being filmed right now down in downtown, but not, not out in Delhi, at least at this point. So uh, that's what that was for. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Um, also, I'd like to talk about the Firefighters Golf Outing. It was a huge success on uh, Friday. So thank you for everybody who came out and um, participated. There were 104 golfers, from what I understand. It was a gorgeous day, and it benefits kids, cops, and firefighters. So um, beautiful event. Um, also, September is National Preparedness Month. On our website, on Del High's website, we do have um, Alert Hamilton County, a link to it. It talks about the SMART 911 that you can sign up for, and that is what um, I believe it was Ann Murray that uh, was behind it, Judge Ann Murray. Um, it's, it's what possible, please? Councilwoman. Councilwoman, excuse me, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, it's what could have saved that young man's life out at... Um, um, Summit Country Day. Um, and so sign up for it. It's free. It will help um, first responders um, and your family. So sign your family up for it. But we do have the link there. It also gives you an opportunity, Alert HC, to, to sign up for 42 different weather alerts. Not that you need them, but if that's your thing, it's there. So 
All right, very good. Uh, we'll move on now to administration. Mr. Re Libby. Resolution 2018-150, resolution imposing regulations for the use of recycling dumpsters at 647 Neeb Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, authorizing enforcement by civil citation fine per sections 504.05, 504.06, 504.07, 504 of the Ohio Revised Code, prosecution by the Township Law Director or any appointed Assistant Law Director as provided herein and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Cameron? I do want to take a minute and reiterate what we're trying to do here. Months ago, the board put in place some simple rules. And what this resolution does is it solidifies them for us to prosecute should somebody break these rules. Right now, if somebody puts a washing machine or television or some other item that's not recycling and is clearly not recycling, the prosecutor's office will prosecute that as littering. So they will do that under the Ohio Revised Code. What we're doing here is establishing through our home rule, home rule abilities for us to prosecute these on our own. So the different rules we have in place that we now have a fine associated with and the ability to prosecute and go after people for these things, uh, Delhi residents only. So these recycling dumpsters are for our residents. You can't be from somewhere else and put stuff in them. Recycling material only. We already talked about that. A couple other little things that people may not understand or think of. The lid needs to fully close when you're putting stuff in there so things don't blow around and it fits in the dumpster. Uh, break down your boxes. So a lot of times people put in a big box and it just takes up too much space and doesn't need to. Um, have to get everything in the dumpster so things can't be left outside of the dumpster. And the hours are 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We've been educating folks on these things and these rules with our employees, some in our police uh, personnel. I will say that it seems to have helped and is, is doing better. Things aren't as egregious as they had been. So thank you to everybody who's been paying attention. And uh, now we will have the ability to go after and impose a fine if, if this is happening and it's something that we need to affect the change on. So that's what these rules do and, and will let us enforce with a penalty moving forward. All right, thank you. Yeah, just a quick question. Is the signage down there, does it say it very clearly? Does it say the fines, what you would be charged with? I mean, so they can see when they're doing it instead of looking up after the fact saying, oh, I didn't know. I mean, these, is the signage nice? And, and if not, then I think we should, out of all fairness, post that so they're aware of what they're in violation of up to whatever fine or whatever. Well, this, because the, this would be the first establishment of fines, there's nothing talking of the fines or the penalty, but there's... I mean, we're, do we plan two, on that is what I'm asking. Can we? Yeah, I mean, there's that? two okay. large, three large signs? Three large signs, each side of the dumpsters and then one coming in, and each dumpster has the rules reiterated on them, like a sticker that's clearly visible. So we can, with these, we can now add fine is... Good. What do you think, Jenny? <laughs> huh? I'm thinking. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Just unpack it a little more. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? The board? Okay. I move to dispense with a second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with a second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with a second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Starts. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Okay. At this time, we're going to have a uh, presentation from our HR director, Mrs. Hermes, on our self-insurance. The presentation will discuss our third-party administrator, stop-loss stop coverage, our broker of record and projected cost to be compliant with the Ohio Revised Code, Section 9.833. Okay, this is um, should be a little bit familiar for people who were here last year. Uh, Delhi Township is self in, uh, self funded, which means we have um, are required by the ORC to discuss some of the options of our health insurance for our employees. Um, ORC 9.833 is the 
um, ORC code that applies to us. Um, and it's just we have to present a statement listing all representations made in connection with any possible saving and losses resulting from the medical self-insurance contract and potential liability of any public subdivisions or employee. The contact the contract itself at public meeting at least one week prior to authorizing the signing of the contract. Um, so at our next trustees meeting, we plan to have the contracts in front of you. The components of medical self-insurance, um, the first person is the employer, that's Stell High Township. Then there's also our broker. Then we have a third party administrator. Um, for those not familiar with self-insurance, that would be similar to Anthem or what you would consider the, um, the insurance to be. And then we also have medical reimbursement and a stop loss carrier. Um, more components, but it's the same overall theory on health insurance. Our insurance broker is Haran Associates, and the broker is the one um, that go, the, the go out to obtain the bids they, for the benefit plans, for um, all the other health insurance, dental insurance, they kind of take our best interest and they're the ones that are evaluating it across us, for us and also across Book of Business. So they, this is what they do. <clears throat> um, and then they, the neck, he moved backwards. Go. Um, so Haran is who our insurance broker is. The next component is um, our plan uh, for our 2018 renewal um, we've, they've gone out to review our current plan and made a recommendation to stay with our current plan um, for 2018, which is administered through custom design and to keep with our current plan design with a, a couple modifications, but not enough, um, not with custom design, true cost benefit plan. So the next, our current renewal, staying everything the same, um, would have been a 29.1% increase, the number to the far right. Um, our renewal changing our stop loss carrier uh, to Symmetra is a 28.2% increase. So that will lead to an increase to what we're playing now, but across the book of business um, from our claims and if we are fully insured, that is still better than being fully insured. Um, this is what our plan would look like for premiums. That is the premium equivalent. So that's the full price of our health insurance per month per member, depending on their plan design. Um, the third party administrator is Custom Design Benefits. This is an organization that processes the insurance claims and aspects of the employee benefit plan for the township, including producing benefit cards, customer service for the benefit plan, et cetera. Um, they offer additional claim services to help reduce claim cl claims cost, including monthly, quarterly, and annual review of claims data, a patient advocacy, uh, the national leader in reference-based pricing. They um, handle our direct contracts with the local providers and integrated pharmacy management, and they have on-site clinical staff for claims and case management. Their offices are located in Green Township, um, so they're not too far away. Uh, the medical reimbursement, um, our plan design is called uh, Custom Design Benefits True Cost. Um, the basis behind this is they take Medicare and set a fixed amount. It's about 140% of Medicare, and that's what they basically pay on all um, our claims unless we have a de direct contract. Um, if we do have a direct contract, it's a contract and negotiated rate, so that's very similar to fully insured. The stop loss carrier um, with self-funded, you have a threshold, and our threshold is $50,000 per member, which means the township pays the first $50,000 per plan year on any uh, customer member claim. Um, typically, that's typically most people don't hit that number, but anything above $50,000, the stop loss carrier reimburses. So. The exposure for the township is the 50000 amount. Um, after that, it gets um, passed on to the stop-loss carrier. There are some other, um, there could be some differences, but the township knows about the exposure if there's an annual ag aggregate as well. So not just the 50000 but there's also a bigger number that we cannot exceed 
um, even if the members haven't reached that $50,000. Um, that's just the setup of the stop loss coverage. It's unlimited with the 50,000. It's a 24-12 look back and look forward. Uh, and it's both medical and prescription. Um, that is a breakdown of some of our fees. Um, the first column would be the monthly rates per individual. The enrollment is how many current members we have enrolled at um, for the plan. And then the right hand column shows what that annual amount is. Um, this chart shows the, the top part of the box shows what the expected claims looks like. The bottom shows what the maximum could be because they do set a range about what's expected, but they also should um, for you to get the true picture, but then they also do the maximum it could be if something were to happen. So our next steps are to have the resolutions at the September 12th meeting and the resolutions related to the self-funded insurance um, plan would be our custom design benefits as the third party administrator, which is the same as who we had this year. And another one would be with Symmetra as the stop loss carrier. And those are expected to be on uh, next month's agenda. So did I understand you to say that our rates have gone up 29%? Yes. Um, one of the things I do want to point out is last year I was doing the numbers. We only had 76 people enrolled and now we have 77 people enrolled. Now we have 86. That doesn't break the per person um, difference down. They're using it. They're, they are comparing it to apples to apples. Um, so they would do the rate as if the 86 were on the old plan and the 86 were on this plan. Um, so just so you know that last year when we switched to custom design, we did increase the number of employees that have elected our uh, insurance plan. And some of the feedback that I've gotten from employees is that they've had positive experiences, um, both with the plan, with our administrator, um, but they also commented that, that some people had been holding off on seeing a doctor but now um, that things are covered that weren't covered um, or they felt weren't covered, they're now going to the doctor. So I'm hoping this means that people are getting in front of things that they might not have been getting in front of before. So um, one of the things that we have done this year is we've also instituted a wellness program. So I'm hoping that some of the components of the wellness program too will help to mitigate some of the claims costs in the future. I, I would add a few thoughts as we're talking about it. The, we changed this last year, and it's a new plan structure than what it was. We did self-insurance. Uh, you did self-insurance in 2016, and then we changed the structure, and it's gone very well. It's custom design has done a very good job. We've had more people use it and that's a good thing because it's it's a retention issue and an attraction issue and that's something we fight all the time is keeping and, and attracting good employees we do have some some higher claims and that wouldn't change you know if we were on a traditional plan we'd be looking at a higher increase um, so this is just sometimes you have a higher amount we we're hoping that the changes we're doing or the the wellness activities it's a long-term look at affecting the premium costs and, and the claims cost. Uh, one thing we're going to institute for this year is a different copay structure for Christ Hospital or the Christ Network because they tend to charge less than the other ones. So we're going to try and encourage people to go to Christ with their copays being less and just understanding that that's more beneficial for us paying claims. Uh, we looked at the stop loss coverage and and we're switching to a different stop loss carrier for I won't go into the detail of it but but for reasons that we think make the plan stronger um, so we're looking at anything we can with self-insurance you have ultimate flexibility on the components you can change and we've Melanie and I have met with Haran and custom design the last few months to talk about is there stuff we can do that would help or encourage or you know, point at ways to make this cheaper, and we're we're pulling the trigger on anything that makes sense. Um, so we're 
we're being as proactive as we can be, I think, but we'd be facing an increase regardless. And um, I, I, the plan's gone very well, and people appreciate, you know, that it's going well. So uh, this is what we would suggest, even considering, you know, switching to self-insurance or doing something else with the plan. I did ask our um, broker uh, what we would be seeing if we were fully insured, and she said if we were fully insured, she would expect that amount to be much higher. Um, she mentioned it would be um, if we were fully insured, going to fully insured based on what we know about our claims history, she would expect about a 35, but going 35% increase rough numbers and that but if we were self-insured going to fully insured it would be closer to 45 percent so we're still doing the right things okay thank you for all your work on that i know it's uh, not an easy task and we do not like this time of year <laughs> any other questions all right thank you very much appreciate it <clears throat> okay we'll move on to parks and recreation Motion 2018-158, approve the hiring of Peggy J. Berninger as seasonal parks and recreation worker in the Parks and Recreation Department at a pay rate of $11.70 per hour, effective August 30th, 2018, upon the successful completion of the drug testing and background check. I move motion 2018-158. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 <clears throat> Rec uh, motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Okay, now on to fire. <clears throat> Motion 2018-159, approve the hiring of Nicholas D. Morrow as career firefighter paramedic in the fire department at the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the IAFF Local 3389 and successful completion of the physical exam. I have a motion, 2018-159. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Another great job. Do you have something to say, Chief? <laughs> yes, uh, we're excited to bring Nick on. As you guys are aware, we lost a firefighter, a full-time <laughs> firefighter to Anderson Township, so this is replacing his position. Nick's been with us for a little bit over a year, been a fantastic paramedic, just fresh out, out of class, but uh, really showing good signs. He's, it, we're excited to bring him on to Delhi. I had two other things I wanted to bring up, if, if possible. Mm -hmm to kind of follow suit with what Trustee Sturtz had mentioned about the alert HC. If you want to see a real gripping PSA, you can just follow before the meetings. Um, there is a PSA that I did on the alert HC program. It's only going to take five minutes. It's five minutes that you probably won't want back, but Either way, um, I cover in into detail what it does, so it kind of emphasizes that. And again, it's on the website. It, I encourage everybody to go out and, and get this free program. Secondly, I'd like to bring to light, um, in June, we launched a local partnership with the American Red Cross on a smoke detector program. Now, it's been a number of years since we've been involved with it. The State of Ohio Fire Chiefs Association really broke ties with the American Red Cross over the detectors that they were giving out. And they were scientifically proven to not be as effective as photoelectric. American Red Cross heeded our warnings and has since reissued the program with the photoelectric models, which has the support of the Ohio Fire Chiefs. Therefore, the program has been partnered with Delhi. What that means for all Delhi residents, you can call up to the firehouse, schedule an appointment. We will come out and install up to three detectors for any detectors that are over 10 years old or malfunctioning. We can replace those. The rule is we have to install it ourselves. It's part of our partnership program. You can't just come up to the firehouse, get a smoke detector, and go home with it. It doesn't work that way. So we need the sporting documentation on that. It is free. Um, we do not have batteries. So one of the things we get called for the most is going to be a chirping alarm. We go out and investigate it. We do not have batteries. At this point in time, it's not cost effective to stock those. If we can find a good deal with Duracell or some other major manufacturer, we will likely go that direction. We've done that in the past. However, that's not part of our current program. So in light of that, if you have residents that go out and have fresh batteries and just need help reinstalling them, we'll do that as well. We can call us for that. But um, the program's really designed around reducing 
fire injuries and deaths by 25% over the next five years is something that hasn't uh, passed by Del High. We've had two fatalities in the last six months, three injuries in the last six months from fire. We just had one on Saturday, and although you don't want to go through a tragedy similar to this, they did have a working smoke detector, and it made it easy to... They had early detection, called us right away. We were able to stop it before it got big and out of control. So um, that's one of those things I want to remind residents is we're not immune to it here in Delhi, but definitely take advantage of this program. It's something that we offer to the whole community, and if there's more questions, they can call us at the firehouse. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Sounds like a great program. Okay, moving on to public works, please. Motion 2018-160, approve the seasonal resignation of Brandon Marchetti and the Public Works Department, effective 8-15-2018. I have a motion 2018-160. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. All right, police department. <clears throat> resolution 2018-151, resolution authorizing the police chief to periodically execute a use authorization agreement with the Hamilton County for the use of its firing range and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Chief? This is an annual uh, contract that we sign with them in a $200 cost that we have to pay for the use of the range. Okay. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mr. Sturts. Yes. Mr. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Motion 2018-161, approve the hiring of Tyler J. Steinley as police officer in the police department at the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the Delhi Police Association upon successful completion of psychological testing and physical exam. I'm in motion 2018-161. Hang on one second. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion 2018-162, for the hiring of Austin D. Lee as police recruit in the police department at a pay rate of $15 per hour upon the successful completion of background investigation, psychological testing, and physical exam. I move motion 2018-162. I second the motion. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Chief, can I just ask you to explain the difference between a police officer and a recruit? Yeah, police officer Tyler, he's passed the background investigation already. He would have the psychological and the doctor's physical. And so we'll have a conditional offer tomorrow based on the passage of those two things. Uh, once he passes those two things, we have an immediate impact. He can actually join the department. We'll go through a rigorous 12 month or 12 week uh field training program and then be out on the street. The recruit, Austin Lee, um, I think probably the three of you know Austin, uh, but Austin's a good kid. Um, he's a graduate of Oak Hills High School. He graduated from Cincinnati Christian University. Uh, he was born and raised here in Del High, just as Tyler was too. Um, he was an explorer for us for seven years, rose to the rank of captain. He's currently a 911 dispatcher. Uh, and in December, he graduates with his master's in public administration. So for a young, I call him a kid, for a young kid, he's done a lot more than you know, some of us will the rest of our lives. So um, he would come in as a recruit. He has not gone through the academy yet, the police academy. So our, we anticipated on putting him in in October of this year. We come to find out, although they advertised the October academy as a full-time academy, it's actually a part-time academy. So he would start in October, October 8th, and wouldn't graduate until next May, being part-time. So going five hours a week and then having, you know, or five hours a day and then having three hours a day as a recruit here doing something here, you know, it's in my best interest, our best interest, to actually send him to a full-time academy. That starts January 7th. Yeah, it starts later, but it, re it actually graduates the same time is the part-time one that starts in October. So we're not losing anything by waiting and making him a full-time recruit January 7th when he starts with us with Delhi Township. We'll just be detailed to the academy until he graduates in May, and then we'll have him on the streets. That's when he starts January 7th? Yeah, okay. correct. But we're locking him in before somebody else gets him. 
Uh, he's already uh, slated to, he's gone through the whole process with the city of Cincinnati. He's uh, slated to start there in April at their next academy. So we'll uh, withdraw that to be with Doha. Okay. So I, I did, I, I'll add a few things. Um, it's not the normal practice to do a recruit versus, you know, a straight hire, but Austin's been an explorer was for seven years seven years mm -hmm. he's going to have a master's degree which will be the second master's degree in the department to the chiefs um he is a dispatcher for hamilton county so he has a great knowledge of the dispatch area already and he's a clerk for us so he already yeah. knows i Failed mean us. he's yeah. his field training will be limited probably the shortest out of out of anybody we've hired um it's just kind of icing on the cake that he and he and Tyler are both Delhi born and raised folks. I mean, that's a nice benefit. But uh, yeah, they're getting Austin locked in is was was a good thing. I did fail to mention he's been a police clerk with us since 2015. Also, okay, so he's very well rounded. Okay, <coughs> two good hires. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, community development. This is always our favorite. <laughs> Resolution 2018-152, resolution renewing Brittany Ridge Subdivision Street Lighting District contract pursuant to revised code 515.081 and 9.30, confirming assessment pursuant to revised code 515.11 and revised code 515.08 and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce to move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, this resolution and the next resolution are both reassessments for two street light districts. This one is Brittany Ridge and the other one is Dellers Glen. We do these every three to three years. Um, what we try to do is keep about a year's worth of money in the coffers in case we don't get assessments in. So both of these are looking at about a 5% increase, which is just really pennies on the dollar. Um, you, people really won't see much on their on their uh, bills but so that is basically what we're doing we're going through our routine next year we'll have four um, that we'll be bringing forward um, we're looking at possibly trying to get all of them put on the same schedule and also looking at possibly changing the lighting to LED in the future too so hopefully trying to reduce the cost for the residents all right thank you mm -hmm. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Starts. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-153, resolution renewing Dellers Glen Subdivision Street Lighting District contract pursuant to revised code 515.081 and 9.30. Confirming assessment pursuant to revised code 515.11 and revised code 515.08 and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? No. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Starts. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-154, resolution extending the moratorium of resolution 2018-028 for one year on the approval, issuance, and or processing of any permits allowing the construction, installation, and or modification to facilities pertaining to many cell towers within the rights of ways and or residential areas of Dye Township, Ohio, and the spending with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be our third moratorium placed on um, these types of uses. These are small cell towers that are placed in the right of way. Basically, they're a pole with a bucket on top of them. They're very unattractive. Um, the township has been working with other townships in Hamilton County to try to get the county engineer's office to move forward with standard language for everyone to use. That unfortunately has not happened. Our last moratorium was for six months, and again, nothing happened at the county. So we're requesting a one-year moratorium that, so we have time to do something that's best for our community and maybe, I don't want to say ignore what the county's got to say, but move forward with what we need to do to protect ourselves in the future for these things. Because based on their use, they can place these things about 100 feet apart from each other and they don't co-locate. So you could have every cell tower user from AT&T to Cricket to Verizon lining our streets with these types of poles. So 
Bruce. Yeah. All I right. move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-155, resolution certifying violation abatement expenses at 445 Leith Avenue to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Yeah, I'm going to summarize uh, this resolution through resolution 159. Basically, what you see in front of you on the left-hand side is the before photos and then on the right hand side is the after photos these are basically properties we have gone out and addressed the nuisance issues at so if you have any questions as you go through them just let me know thank you i move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution all those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading yes yes, yes. mr Olivia, please call the roll mrs sturtz yes mrs Seavey. yes mr davis yes resolution passes Resolution 2018-156, res resolution certifying violation abatement expenses at 468 Wilkie Drive to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-157, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 3930 Dye Pike to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? No. <laughs> I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-158. Resolution, resolution certifying a violation of abatement expenses at 4343 Mount Alverna Road to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading. Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-159, resolution certifying violation of abatement expenses at 5000 Francis View Drive to the county auditor for assessment and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-160, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 579 Stillwater Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. DeLong? Since we have so many we have coming yeah. up, I'm going to summarize. Um, there has been effort on many of these properties to try to clean them up, but they were all still in violation as of this morning. So we do request that you declare a nuisance from this resolution to the end of the agenda. So 11 more. 11 more. <laughs> I think Thank that you. Dow High Pike has been on for about five years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At least that, you think? Oh, the previous one? Yeah. That one, we are actually submitted that to the land bank, and it's actually in their queue. So hopefully they will be acquiring it and demoing that. So Good. All right. Uh, I move to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. Second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. <clears throat> All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-161, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 753 Lullaby Court and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution <clears throat> passes. 
Resolution 2018-162, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 801 Anderson Ferry Road and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. This is Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-163, resolu resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 990 Beach Meadow Lane and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-164, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 1028 Ebenezer Road and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? <clears throat> I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-165, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 5127 Mount Overna Road and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-166, resolution declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 305 Anderson Ferry Road and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-167, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 524 Mantola Avenue and dispense it with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-168, Resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 4476 Dolly Pike and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second a motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-169, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 5344 Orange Lawn Drive and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2018-170, resolution declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 5641 Victory Drive and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. CV? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Amen. All right, I have nobody who's signed in for citizen comments tonight, but we do have announcements of community events. 
The free Friday fishing is open through September 28th. It runs from 7 a.m. until dusk, and it's at Clearview Lake, 5125 Foley Road. The Delhi Farmer's Market is open every other Saturday. The next date is September the 1st. It is open from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and is at Clearview Lake at 5125 Foley Road. The Delhi Historical Society program, Ohio River Navigation, yesterday and today, will be Monday, September the 10th at 7 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Park Lodge at 5125 Foley Road. The Delhi Township Veterans Association general meeting will be Tuesday, September 11th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Senior Community Center at 647 Neeb Road. The Delhi Township Parks and Recreation Department presents Speakeasy Spirits. It will be Friday, September 21st from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. It will be at the Delhi Park Lodge at 5125 Foley Road. The 5th Annual Mount St. Joe 5K will be Friday, September 21st at 6.30 at Mount St. Joseph University at 5701 Delhi Avenue. The Delhi Branch Library hosts a free solar workshop Monday, September 21st, 24th from 7 to 8 p.m. It will be at the Branch Library at 5095 Foley Road. Mount St. Joe Community Electronic Recycling Day will be Saturday, September 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It will be in Mount St. Joe West parking lot at 5701 Delhi Avenue. Okay. Our next regular meeting is Wednesday, September 12th at 6 p.m. And we do have a need to go to executive session. Motion 2018-163 to retire to executive session to con consider the appointment, employment, and or compensation of a public employee of the township and also to consider the purchase property, the purchase of property for public purposes. I move motion 2018-163 to retire to executive session to consider the appointment, employment, and or compensation of a public employee of the township and also to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. I second the motion. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Motion passes. Everybody have a blessed and safe um, Labor Day. Be careful. <clears throat> Mm-hmm.